This week, Adobe released Adobe Firefly, generative AI that's by Adobe using content that is already there within uh, the Adobe stock and they're licensing from that. That's the model that they've used. So we're gonna be diving straight in and we're gonna see what Adobe Firefly is all about and what are the features that's available right from the get-go. Also, one thing to note, if you haven't already, and if you have an Adobe ID, and you can also join the beta. To start with, you're gonna be going into adobe.com slash Firefly. Now that's gonna take you into the Adobe beta. Again, if you're not with the beta program, you just need to click on join the beta with your Adobe ID that you're using for your Adobe products. Click on the join beta and it takes you to the text to image text effects. For now, these are the only two ones that are available, but in the future, we do have a recolor vectors that's coming out. And there is a video that actually gives us an idea about what the potential of Adobe Firefly is all about. Text to image is the one that we'll be exploring today. And even though some of them are mentioned over here, there is not the future of in painting and move yet, but that's coming in shortly. As we can see, the potential is really there when you're thinking about adding a jacket or changing the expression of the person. So it's really a strong tool like that. And then there's also depth in the image. So any image can now become a depth map, especially an image that is created through Adobe Firefly. 3D2 image is also coming up. These are not yet available to us. Um, as you can see, these are already here, but these are in exploration. So we don't actually have an access to those. What we do have an access to, however, is the text to image. As we can already see that the text to image has a robust gallery of different creators creating all sorts of different things like an Eiffel Tower in desert with river. And now we're gonna be adding our own. So I'm gonna be saying a woman sitting in Paris. We're just starting with the art style, as you can see over here. The overall thing about this is the UI is really nice because it has this nice look and it has, instead of prompts, it's given us this panel that we can work with. So aspect ratio, content type, styles, color and tone, lighting and composition. Now we can see that they don't have the bias as in general, because that has been an issue with uh, AI in general, because it was hard for AI to create a different variety of beauty when we were talking about women. But here, I was just talking about a woman and it gave me four different ethnicities of women, which is really nice and four different poses as well. But let's not stop there. I'm going to try and explore just a little bit of the themes that we have going on here. So let's take a movement and let's take steampunk and let's go with photograph. Immediately it changes. So it doesn't even take a second there. And then I'm going to also change this to a portrait. As you see, the minute you click on these, it dynamically shifts the placeholders of those images. You can also change the color and tone and my God, these images are already ready. How perfect they are, we can't say yet because these are far from perfect, but these images do have a mood to it. Obviously, they just uh, slapped in the, uh, the steampunk in there. It's, it's obviously a, a lot to work with because the background looks like it's made out of paper. It's, it doesn't look like it's, it's actually in there, but let's go back to the art style. And for color, I'm gonna say warm tone. And for lighting, I'm gonna say backlight. Now this is doing a much better job, even though there is a bit of a distortion, it's still doing a little bit of a relatively a better job uh, when, with regards to that. Now I'm gonna say another one is gonna be a close up. And then we're gonna regenerate this. So it's pretty similar to our already known text to image generators like Stable Diffusion and DALI and Midjourney. But the only difference with Adobe is that it's the first enterprise level text to image maker, which is why they are trying to bake in a really professional UI that can work. And it almost feels like you're working with like a Photoshop or any Adobe product. Another thing to note is that there is no possible way to get your images in a gallery or in your own gallery like you would have for mid-journey because they don't have that yet. So the only thing that you can do is like join Discord or visit the beta community or report a bug or submit an idea. The minute you go back, all these images would just be gone. So 
For this purpose, I'm gonna actually take this specific image and I'm gonna click on download. Now what happens the, the moment you download is that it's promoting transparency in AI. Now this is something that's been really spoken about and encouraged by Adobe. They are trying to say that they wanna make transparency with the work that's being created by AI because a lot of people are showing concern that AI might be overtaking a lot of the art. So, which is why Adobe is starting to create what is called as content cre credentials, and it will be included and embedded in the metadata of the image that is created by the person using the Adobe ID. So once we click on that, it's applying those content credentials, and then when you would see it, you can actually see it over here. But that's not it. Now when you go back and when you would click on any of them, you can see a content credentials page just fall out. And that's something that's really important because if we click on this one over here, you're actually gonna be able to see an overall inspect and see where these are going, like how many images this has created and how many images have been um, generated from this. Obviously, this one has no versions for this, this specific mouse. But a good thing that you can do is you can inspect your own file. And I'm gonna actually just check the file that we have just now. And the minute we put that, you can also see that this was created like a 25th of March and it was generated using an AI tool. So that's really nice. And they're also giving it a model number. So it's Firefly model number 1.0.1 or 1.0.0 and create a new file or content. Changes and actions taken to produce this content possible matches. So that's the only one that's been created. Now this is really nice to note that Adobe has created a completely different website to handle all of these things, to see the version histories and changes in AI. So that's really there. Another thing that's nice, and again, like I mentioned, the image that we had just now made, once we came out of it, you can't actually see the image. So the image just goes in the gallery somewhere. But what happens is now if you want to like try another prompt same like mid journey we can just click on try prompt so for this one i'm actually going to take this one right over here now this one was created on march 20th so we can clearly see what's being created over here i'm going to try prompt and immediately it gives me a different variation and different styles but instead of a square i'm going to go for widescreen that's 16 by 9 Another good thing about this is that we don't have to worry about uh, dash dash uh, or adding any kind of parameters. These pretty much just get added in over here. And there you go. Clearly we have a beautiful um, image. Let's try and add some different sources or so different concepts and themes. Let's make it overall a pixel art and generate. Now, wow, the pixel art really has a good quality to it. Like you can actually see it um, giving out that kind of a vibe a really nice video game kind of a vibe. Now let's even make it even more above the thing. Shot from above, lighting is gonna be low light. And then we're gonna click, click on generate. I'm gonna do another one, which is gonna be a pixel wireframe. We can clearly see that by adding these different styles, we don't have all those in painting and other options available to us directly now, but that's a really good scope of understanding of what this text to image can do for us. But I think the most striking one that we can look at, and again, you can always get inspiration if you have the access to it for all the different kinds of work that's been done. And you can just click on try prompt for yourself and see which one you want to work with. And then you can play around with that. Again, these don't get saved in any kind of a gallery. So you don't have a gallery of your own, but you can actually see the community's gallery that is out there. And obviously you can just always click on try prompt and a prompt can be created from there. But that's the thing, you have to always download the images so that it can be saved with you. But otherwise, these images are the ones that you can always learn and try from. With that said, we're gonna now try the next most important and powerful thing, which is the text effects. Because that is not something I have seen uh, Mid Journey uh, do very much with. We can already see some examples that the community has done. Now in this example, you can add the text on this side over here and you need to add the description of the text that will turn into something over here. Again, the same thing applies that the content credentials are embedded in these as well. And in the future, these will also become vectors. So you can use them in your Illustrator and Photoshop files 
to create different kinds of things. It's just insane. I'm gonna actually put the name of this the channel right over here. So then I'm gonna add it, I'm gonna put Molten Lava. This is really interesting because now you can actually see the word and you can also see some styles, which style we want to approach with. So they have a couple of different fonts that they have here. I'm gonna go with Vortice and the minute we do Vortice, first it actually shows up with that and then you can check whether it needs to be loose and you can also add background color. So we can add some background color. We can make it like black because it might look really nice. And sample effect. So these are some of the sample effects that are there. And the images or the text will come down over here. So we can see the different variations of the molten lava that are getting produced. And it looks really beautiful the way that it's creating the lava effect, especially on the eye and everything. So that's really an interesting uh, thing to look at. Let's try one alphabet now. So I'm gonna try I. You can clearly see how beautiful and intricate that is. Then if we do A. The detail and the texture is just insane. And then when you also download this one, again, it's gonna be the same thing, but this time another difference is that when you download it, it's a transparent file and that is just amazing because that means now you can use it in anywhere you want and in any style kind of things you want. Again, one thing to note is that none of these can be used commercially as long as it's in the beta. So that, that also they've covered that. So you can't use this commercially, unlike uh, Mid Journey or uh, Dali. Uh, so that's something that we have to keep into consideration. Now let's try something else. And I want to make it more fluffy. So let's change the typeface to Alfarn. And then... Let's make it more tight. And it's really nice that they actually get exactly the type of A. So I'm gonna have both A's. So one is the small A, one is the capital A. Soft, and we should actually change the color. So to add it, we're gonna say soft pink fur. The texturization on the text looks amazing. You can actually see how it's beautifully creating it. I think this is the real superpower that Adobe has more than the text to image. This is something that I'm also going to be keeping a lookout on because Adobe is a big, big player in this entire space. Because as of now, we have Mid Journey, Dali and Stable Diffusion with Leonardo coming in as well. I'm going to be also talking about Leonardo in another video. That was all that Adobe had in the beta. More is going to be released soon and I'm also going to be adding more videos about that. So don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Also. I post weekly newsletters about all things AI and I just sum it up in a TLDR so you can actually have a look. It comes out on Sundays or Mondays and I also have a podcast that comes out once a week. So if you're interested in any of those things, you can just go down and check it in the description below. And with all that said, I hope you're really interested with everything that's AI because over the last couple of weeks, AI has been exploding all across the board and Adobe was just one of them. We have so much more to explore. And also, don't forget to check out this video and this video if you like more AI content. Some of the videos are obviously going to get older, so I'm also going to be adding more refresher videos like the one on Mid Journey, which I'm going to be adding in. But with that said, I'm going to see you in the next video. Bye.